Give us any chance, we'll take it. Read us any rule, we'll break it. We're gonna make our dreams come true. Welcome to Nash and Edit podcast about eight seasons in a row. I'm Lisa Fernandes and... I'm Chris Dry Wardner. Hello. And we're going to review the absolute course from season three of Laverne and Shirley, directed by Alan Rafkin and written by Arthur Silver. I bet you get some facts about them, don't you, Chris? A little bit, yeah. So with regards to Arthur Silver, this is his last episode uh, that will be credited as a writer. He also worked on uh, three episodes of season one, including Falter at the Altar, Dating Slump, and Mother Knows Worst. Now, uh, he ended up actually producing much of season three, and um, he does continue producing through part of season four, and then would go on to other projects such as the miniseries Brothers and Sisters before producing a little bit here and there across the 1980s, including Married with Children, and as well as developing the Bad News Bears TV series. His last credit as an exec producer, to my surprise, is the Get Carter remake, of all things. The one with Sylvester Stallone. Cool. Which, um, cool. which I, I genuinely love that movie, to be honest. I, I, I do obviously prefer the original, but I enjoy the remake a great deal. Anyway, Alan Rafkin. Uh, as usual, this was an episode that allowed him the opportunity to get a little more coverage. Um, and so by we get a little more kind of close-ups and inserts and because of some of the nature of this episode we get more kind of montage you know qualities so there's a little bit more of a directorial hand here so not necessarily facts but more analysis what's kind of cool about this is when i mentioned in the last episode uh, for the last time where that focused a lot on the good long takes good long wide shots to let the jokes build up over time here they're able to craft things with the coverage a little bit more just kind of keep the tempo a little tighter and uh this also has one of my favorite close-up reaction shots in the entire season and I, I think lisa knows exactly which one i'm talking about yes 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 that's such a good movie but, but that's that's what we got for rafkin today and this is what the episode's about when Shirley learns that laverne's going to be trying out for the milwaukee police department's new lamp program or ladies auxiliary milwaukee police she wants to try out too even though laverne and norman try to dissuade her from trying out for the physically demanding program Shirley insists she can take the punishment and takes part in the tryout, a tough obstacle course. Shirley runs out of the room in embarrassment after failing on the first try. Laverne's afraid that Norma's chances at impressing the supervisor have been ruined forever and brands Shirley a cream puff in public. With Norma's sexist spirit officer to smoke and her pride on the line, will Shirley prove she has the physical chops to make it? Meanwhile, the boys pawn Mrs. Babish's stove to fund the making of their movie, Milwaukee Confidential, a loosely flawed exploitation film that depends on a lot of skin. What do you think of this one? It was fun. Well, it was great to see Norman again. That's the main thing yeah. I was really happy about. Um, yeah, it was good. I mean, the, the training montage was no 36 Chamber of Shaolin, but, you know, it'll do. Yeah. Um, but no, <laughs> it's... Uh, but this is... I, I, I looked at things, you know, in some respects, I think a tad cynically about, like, the way... Especially with regard to the women in the police force about, like, okay, is this, is this revisionist history or something like that? But when I rewatched it with my mother, it was actually really cool to see it through her eyes that she felt really empowered by the thought that in the 1970s, they were trying to make this clear, like, you know, women being police officers and trying to even transpose that into the, 19, the 1960s setting of this episode and saying, yes, they can. And to show that it's not always for everybody, but that um, those who can will be able to succeed. And those who maybe don't fail, sorry, those who don't succeed the first time um can then grow into that role they can practice it they can train at it um which adds to what i felt was one of the cool things about this being kind of character driven again for for shirley about her uh you learn i think you sort of learn a lot more even though it's not explicitly said yeah she learns that there's nothing that is impossible if you put your mind to it hey there you go to it. and she wants this so badly just to prove that she's not girly shirley which mm -hmm. comes up here uh, she's always seen as dainty and sweet and non-athletic compared to Laverne. I love her series of stories about how, as a kid, she just kept on failing as an athlete over and over again. That story about her being her um, being in the middle of the, of the, I think it was a lake. It was the middle of the lake. Yeah, it's a lake. Uh, hang on a second. Yeah, yeah far to right. The that was a far right outfield. They spent the whole summer knee deep in Lake Chihuahua. Lake Chihuahua, Lake Chihuahua, and how she was always picked last, and how she was always never the top choice to be a center fielder, to be a pitcher, to be first in the batting roster. 
And this is her chance to prove she can kick butt. And Cindy Williams really comes through. Cindy Williams is tigress in all the physical stuff she has to do. She kicks so much butt. Mm -hmm. Hat tip to her, because I know I couldn't do that. I could not do that rope climbing at, this, at the moment, right now. I could not do that to save my life. Yeah, I, I think but. the rope climb would be the one I would have the most trouble with. That and the, yeah. uh, the, not, the not the monkey bars, but, you know, the, the bar walk, basically, with the hands. That, that's a tough one. I mean, actually, that was my one complaint about it, is that it's hard for me to believe that Shirley is incapable of it because Cindy's in obviously such good shape. Um, yeah. But, uh, but that's where it comes in, as I was mentioning, sort of the yeah. subtle, almost subtextual, accidentally subtext yeah. Uh, yeah. element, which is, you know, I, oh, where's my note here? Yeah, the main issue is that like, Shirley doesn't keep her momentum. She holds back, and it's, it's why she's not able yeah. to you know, accomplish it that first time. Yeah. And to be honest, I kind of feel like that extends into like, her with men with her goals it's like she tries yeah. but then she like overthinks it and then yeah. oh and then can't do it like she psychs herself yeah. out because you know it's like yeah. elements of like she's got to have her purse and she's got to have this and she's got to have that and those elements and it's it's frustrating to watch at times but it's also relatable because it's like the fear you know and and it's that things yeah. have to be this certain way yeah. she absolutely thinks that she's capable she's confident and yet she's so confident that when she rushes into something she's not prepared for, she just gets trammeled into the ground, and then she's too embarrassed to deal with the after effect of what she's caused. It's pure Shirley in a lot of ways, this episode. Mm -hmm. and, and I love how much depth it adds to her. Mm -hmm. It adds this extra layer of, sure, she's dainty and sweet, and she's the reason when she's a smart one, and the organizer and the planner and the girly one, but she can also do this. Mm -hmm. and all the points you made, by the way, about how this sort of served to teach women that, yeah, you can do this. This is an accessible career for you. You can do anything. This is a beautiful, that was a beautiful point. And that's very true for this episode as well. It was, it was more, just, just to make it clear, that was more my mother's statement than my message. Well, your I mom, just... we got to give credit to your mom. Shout out to Chris's mom. Chris's mom made a great point there. She made an excellent yeah. point. Perfect points. Yeah. To come back to, as we were saying, you know, these elements of, of Shirley, it then kind of makes sense. You know, I was looking back at, you know, the other episodes that Arthur Silva has written, and they include Dating Slump and Mother Knows Worst, which are uh, yes. episodes that really humanize yeah. Shirley. Yes. And... And that's, you know, the, the, it's, it's kind of nice to see that roundedness getting to come back a little bit and to have that kind of layer, the psychological layer of the insecurities coming to the forefront in her behavior. And, um, as you're saying, this confidence is overwhelming confidence, but also that sort of daydream confidence that, uh, is, is almost so enthusiastic that when confronted with the reality of that, you know, you're not going to do it the first time you have to practice yeah. that, uh, you know, is I mean, that was, again, another one of my mother's notes is that, you know, um, she can do it. She just if she practice, she get better. That was literally what my mother said. And it's yeah. it's like surely it doesn't quite understand that yet. And it it, it it tracks that makes sense with, you know, the aspects of yeah. how we've seen what her what her mom was like, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lillian Feeney is one of those women who cannot stand imperfections. And Shirley, in a way, kind of absorbs those feelings her mom has about herself and acts accordingly. And that's what's tragic about her in a lot of ways. But on the other hand here, she triumphs so totally and so awesomely mm -hmm. that it's impossible not to root for her. That final moment where she reaches the top of that road, the audience loses it as well they should. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's perfect. It's completely perfect. The camera angles for that part of the episode, by the way, are incredibly phenomenal. The way they shoot her climb, the rope, the way she uh, moves up the rope, and the way everybody reacts is really great. Really great. It's probably... Yeah, they, 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 oh, sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. You were, you were still going. I would guess it's probably one of Rafkin's finer moments as a director on the show. Exactly. Yeah, I was going to say is the the amount of coverage they got really helps flesh out the scene. I'm so glad that they they went the extra mile for that because it's clear, I mean, from the audience reaction that Cindy probably did 
most of it in a single take and yeah. um and and you know there probably are, there probably are a few points of the cuts where it's it's for you know mistakes or things like that yeah. but it's um uh or just to kind of keep everything with a consistent momentum but still it's it it definitely enhances it's where it enhances the scene you know it's you know it, there's there, there i have I've heard it said, I believe, that, you know, never do in four what you can do in two. And yeah. um, which is the theory of basically always make sure you use the right amount of cuts, the right amount of shots and setups. And uh, they use the right amount. Because what I also like is you get to see her face reacting to things. This is a really yeah. good facial expression episode. Yeah, it is. I was going to say, we learned a fact recently while doing a mega thread on our Twitter that they had no monitors on Laverne and Shirley at all. Mm-hmm. They tried to do everything in one take, and then if the director didn't get the coverage, they would have to go back and reshoot, which you were pretty amazed by, if I remember correctly, director that you are. I I am. Um, so, yeah, if, if we're going to talk about that, this is a good spot to do yeah. so. Basically, when so, you're yeah. operating camera, if you're a really experienced camera operator, for the most part, you're going to figure out how to tunnel vision into your frame. You're going to figure out how to um, keep track of all the things in that. Now, I, I, when I shoot, I'm often thinking of directorial and editorial decisions at the same time, so I have a tendency to not notice the those aspects. So that's why monitors are great, because monitors allow the director or the play, or in my case, really, it's often playback on the on the DSLR cameras that I use to be able to let the director or the actors, you know, or let's say like a stunt person figure out, okay, yeah, this didn't, this doesn't work. This isn't play, whatever. And let's go back and do it again to basically put all of that trust that you got it, that you've got the facial expressions, that the eye lines are correct. That this means that the directors on this show had to be keeping away, aware of these things. That's why Rafkin is one of the, has proven himself to be one of the best directors this show probably will ever have is because the, yeah the eye lines are always spot you know pretty typically are spot on at the very least they work yeah. as is elements of coverage and so the setups you know i mean because you know an experienced dp is going to know all their asa settings they're going to know you know their their shutter speeds and shutter angle type stuff you know a lot of those things are you know it's it's there's a formula for it but in terms of actually operating sometimes rather elaborate setups and long takes you know and making sure all those details i guess what i'm saying is like Imagine if some prop or say a mark, so say that a camera, the ca camera dollies, you know, um, this actually shows up in um, the, the slow child episode where you see errors, where you actually see past the set when the camera dollies over to Lenny jumping over the, uh, the kitchen counter. Yeah. And, it, it, and so they, and that from the looks of things, from what you and I were kind of figuring out and discussing, it might have yeah. been because there's no really the the audio and the laugh track is really um, inconsistent. It probably yes. was the was might have been the dress rehearsal, yeah. and so that's the thing is like you know you have to you're trusting that you didn't go too far on a moving camera, or you know again like you know say the handheld shots that are here in in this episode where you know you may it may shake too much you may bonk at the at the wrong moment. And so that that's a yeah. uh, and sometimes that's why you know it, it's usually if you have the the time get two safeties with every yes. t every time you think it's a good take get two safeties if you're really not a hundred percent sure or you want to experiment get three but yeah anyway that's my actual have actually having been on set directing and shooting yes. movies you know two cents to, to add to it but yeah no that's it's rafkin definitely gets to, to play with it but but as, as i was saying before i mean this is a good time to bring it up is that um despite the fact the framing's a little off and the lighting's a little off that close-up when uh yeah. the uh yeah. <laughs> when chiefy decides to yeah. make the remark about barefoot and pregnant and it cuts to that yes. close-up or me it's, it's a me it's a medium close of laverne and that yes. head turn that's yeah. Mm, that's good. God, that's great. I am amazed they did all this with no monitors. And I'm amazed at how good the direction is in this episode. The way he frames that shot. And the way Penny acts it. Which slowly turns around. And then she just calmly and efficiently smokes that course. And then shoves the guy in the pool. <laughs> and then walks off. That's my girl. Yep. That's my girl. That's my, that's one of my favorites. 
I'm a Lenny girl, but LeBron's my favorite. Uh, it was also impressive that they, they did speed up the footage a little bit, but not by much yeah. when uh, Laverne yeah. runs the course. Yeah. Yeah. That's how strong Penny Marshall was. She could do all this physical stuff. She could smoke it. She always said that she never really did a lot of physical training or exercise or anything. She said, it was just my weird body. It was just my weird metabolism. I don't know how I was able to do all this stuff. I don't know how I was able to pick up all these guys. I just did it. Hmm. Was her quote on it. Hmm. And then she finished it off by saying, I'm the only person I know who went to chemotherapy and get fat. That's what she said. Huh. Jeez. That was her, the end of her quote because she had had brain tumor and lung tumor at the time because that's she got there. Anyway, to drag things off the depressing track. But, yeah. There is something incredible about how good she is. It's really incredible. She is just almost, I wouldn't say it was effortless, because Odin it seemed to take a lot of strength to do that. But wow. This is one of those examples of how good she was, physically. Mm -hmm. And we'll get more of that as time goes on. But here, it's incredible. Just completely incredible. She nails it in one breath. One single breath. And Norman is so into it. Norman is so cute in this episode. The two of them are so cute. They are, yeah. They're, it's oh, it's a... I, and this and that's this is Norman's last episode. Yeah, yeah we never see him again. Uh, we never hear about him again. It's depressing. And they are so adorable. Laverne is supposed to go meet his mom and have dinner with her. I know. I want that yeah, as an episode. Together. I want that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I can, and then, yeah. I, I was gonna say I can even imagine she's, you know, it's like you think like, oh, what's his mom like in this little bitty, and it's like, no, she's yeah. just she's, <laughs> she's the one who's like the tough cop. She's got he's uh, he's yeah. got he's oh, got, yeah. got he's got a tough cop mom, and uh, yeah, who, who probably wouldn't approve of Laverne, right? Because she's not tough enough even for her. Mm -hmm. My theory actually because. We know there's no real reason for it happening. There's probably no continuity behind the scenes. But my theory is that that didn't go well, and that's why they broke up. Mm. It's my, only, my sad guess. We know there's no actual continuity. Right. I mean, we, well, there's continuity. No, no, no. no I, I'll be fair to the show. There's continuity. There is linear thought sometimes. But he disappears completely. Uh, Laverne's eventual boyfriend, Sonny, who she goes out with like six episodes in season six, disappears, never mentioned again. Mm. She dates a fireman named Ted, he disappears. And uh, the last relationship her character gets in is with a photographer named Mike, played by Larry Breeding. Uh, it was supposed to be a much more serious thing. She goes on, she sees, she sees him twice. She goes on two dates with him. He was going to reoccur and appear in several more episodes in season eight. But unfortunately, uh, Larry Breeding passed away in a car accident, so they had to get rid of the character. Aw, oh, man. So, Laverne has bad romantic luck. God, that's not, I yeah. mean, that's not fair. Not to mention that is, it's one of the saddest and lamest reasons why you could, uh, you could lose a cast member. Yeah. Yeah, he died, passed in a car accident. It was really sad, really Horrible mm. 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 Uh. I was gonna say to drag things back to light and fluffy here. <laughs> again, um, again, yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be again. one of those episodes where it vacillates, apparently. Uh, apparently, yeah. Uh, Norman is such a wife guy in this episode. He is so supportive of a burn kicking butt. Uh, no one can say that about these women. He praises her toughness. Mm -hmm. uh, he's so here for her being awesome uh he's not as supportive of shirley but only because shirley is tanking his hopes and dreams when it comes to his career right <laughs> unintentionally unintentionally she's not doing this on purpose she really thinks she can do it initially mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but he's not quite as supportive of shirley but he is so here for everything laverne does uh this has one of those wink wink nudge nudge opens this episode does mm. in which we think Carmen and Shirley have been fooling around and they have not been fooling around but 
I mean, we I'm. Were... I still don't buy that everything was a hundred percent innocent. Come on, there, there's. Yeah. yeah, no, no, I'm not gonna buy that. <laughs> I understand. Okay, it's a wink, wink, nudge, nudge, and that's what makes it cute. But come on. Sashing right down Smut Lane again. <laughs> oh, God. I love that he's standing there without his pants, and she's in a robe. I don't know why she's in a robe. Why is she in a robe? There's no reason for her to be in a robe. See, that's that's the suspicious thing, you know. Yeah. It's too it's too late in the day, you know. Unless I yeah. don't know, she was getting a shower yeah. after work or something. Yeah. No. Well, what the line is is that Carmen was teaching her how to dance. He was teaching her a specific dance, and then he ripped his pants. Oh, that's right. And she was fixing his pants. So the possibility is that she was sweaty, she took a shower, and then she sewed up his pants, mm-hmm. uh, which makes no sense. Mm-mm. <laughs> So perhaps they were L seven eighty one ing and B twelve forty eight ing. Right. Uh, but that's it. Whether know. whether whether you agree with it or not, I, I do like the fact that Carmine appears totally ready to get his role in the new Batman as the penguin. <laughs> I was like this pant legs sewn together, waddling along. <laughs> and then Laverne picks him up, which is great. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yeah, I love that bit. Oh, all the dialogue there is great. The men in my family haven't had very tiny legs. <laughs> it's all uh, the dialogue about, you can tell me I'm a cop. And then Laverne reacting in utter horror when Shirley says it's no, it was nothing. Right, yes. It was nothing? <laughs> yes, it's like, it's like come on, it's, it's you and Carmine. It can't be nothing. And it, it, yeah. it just, oh. It was <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, again, I, I just, it's, there are times when Shirley has come up with these sort of stories. I mean, she even does later in this episode when Laverne tracks it down at the pizza bowl and it's like, oh, you thought I was all upset about what happened, about failing the course. Like, that's so cute. It's like, no, it's a similar enough tone to me with yeah. that opening scene. It's like, you know, I think she's just come up with a story on the fly right away. And Conway doesn't yeah. care. He's like, I've been dating her for years. Who cares? Yeah. You know, it's our business. Yeah. Who cares? It's yeah, not exactly. your business. Yeah, exactly. They would have boned multiple times by now. They've been dating since they were in high school, all the way through high school. So they had to have gotten together either at the tail end of junior high school or right during their freshman year. Mm-hmm. High so so, high school way too many times, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I was going to to that, I mean, well, first of all, I was going to say, when you said bone, I, I really wanted to command or hold that with, you know, uh, anyway, never bone. mind. Bone! <laughs> Oh wow! I just noticed I the waveform on that. Officer. <laughs> How dare you, Detective Hughes? I am your superior officer. <laughs> there oh. We go. oh, thank you. I don't remember the line by heart, so thank you for filling that in. Well, oh. it's Detective, Detective Diaz in the show, but yeah, I was making a normal joke because I had to. Anyway, right, right. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, yeah, no, that's that's a great little did they didn't they sort of opening. That was a good open. Yeah. I like it, and it it's I love how startling it is for the audience too. Like they the audience is picking yeah. up on the implication like hardcore. Yeah. yeah. Pun intended. Yeah. They kind of wanted it to happen. They kind of wanted it to happen. Yep. I I also love that of all the movies Norman wanted to see it was Son of Flubber. That's that's yeah. so that's so adorably Norman. <laughs> yeah, it's so innocent. It's very very young. It's very young. I mean, I, I can just okay. imagine, you know, 1971, 1970, yeah, I think it was 70 or 71 comes around and the French Connections release and he's just like, that's so unrealistic, that's horrible. You mean police officers yeah. do that? How could they do that? <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, to side notes, let's talk about the boys trying to make a movie. Because That was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Everything about it. Uh, the fact that they have no real idea what the heck the movie's about, really, to be honest. You're a young girl. You're in love with the gymnasium. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And and I, I can't believe that they stopped filming. It's like, no, no, no. It's doing nothing for me. It's like, she's 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 very attractive, all gyrating. Come on, Le- Squig. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's great. No, I love Squeaky's like Fritz Lang slash y- Josef von Sternberg look with the riding pants and the the was it fly swatter instead of a riding crop? I think. Yes. 
yeah, I, I, I love the uh, the cinematography, the kind of more French New Wave cinematographer look for Lenny with his uh, beret and the yeah. sweater. And and I actually so, I, I think yeah. that's a really clever camera mount because it's basically kind of like the uh, the yeah. PVC pipe spider brace that I used yeah. to use for many, many years. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's interesting. It works. And I, I love that they got the flashlights on there. Which I almost yeah. wonder if like they did that for like low tech uh, documentary camera rigs, and if they if they knew yeah. film students, they may have may have known that that was what you know the kind of the the amateur newsreel photographers would do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very Sam Raimi. Is what I yes. think of when I see those kind of rigs. Oh God! Um, oh God! God, oh. it's very very Sam Raimi. I love the fact that the two of them are just trying like heck. Basically, to get Laverne to take her top off. And yep. then, when she won't take her top off, and then we need some skin Laverne, they turn towards Shirley, the angry roommate, the sequel. Yes. And she goes, I have a headache, which is so oh, I forgot. I forgot the headache line. Oh, that's great. Oh, God. Everything about it. Uh, they pawned Edna's stove for the money for the camera. Yep. That's... So that's uh, yeah, that's the that's some indie filmmakers' way. I've I've been a little more yeah. I've been a lot more privileged in that regard. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it is a thing that people have done stupid stuff before. I mean, hey, at least they didn't get a bunch of credit card debt. And this turns out well enough for them that they explore this option when they move to California. They start screenwriting. They become agents. They can start producing their own movies. So hmm. this becomes a thought for them. This becomes a character threat in the end. But they really want to direct. Yeah, they try to direct in Lunar in L.A. It does not work well. Yeah. I think the most annoying thing about this plot thread is that it does not culminate in anything. Mm-hmm. Agreed. It needs some kind of closure. Like maybe there's a tag scene where they're all sitting in the girl's apartment watching this horrible movie the boys have made. Right. Or they can't sell. <laughs> or they snuck into the obstacle course and filmed it as a chase scene. Yeah. And in that great Edward fashion, it's like none of this makes sense because there's no context. Yeah. Just all this. Yeah. yeah. Flailing limbs and dummies. Yeah. Yeah. There's 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 ah! other other shows that I feel like have handled that those jokes a little a little more cleanly with like a good conclusion to them. Yeah. 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 It just needed one drop of conclusion a bow some kind mm. of tie anything that wraps up that part of the storyline everything else is perfect yeah the rest of the story the way shirley's art, character arc works is bafo uh it's beautiful and the sisterhood involved and norman and laverne being adorable and the way shirley finally triumphs all that's perfect but this part of it just needed something anything to tie it up yeah. mm-hmm Anything to finish it off. Yeah. Uh, that, I love this. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, though, in terms of the way the episode concludes, it was really sweet the way that Laverne climbs up the rope to yeah. get her down. It's A, it's very yeah. impressive. Um, yeah. My, my mom commented that, you know, that uh, when it comes to Laverne, she's like a mama to her sometimes. You know, when Shirley gets yeah. into trouble, she has yeah. Laverne has to help her out. Yeah. They are very much each other's moms sometimes. Yeah. I mean... From Shirley nurturing Laverne when she's sick and going for raspberries and taking care of her when she thinks she's pregnant, look before you leave. And Laverne protecting Shirley here and protecting her from her mom. It's, you know, a, a two-sided sisterhood. They would do anything for each other, which is the repeated thought line. As we've said before, and we'll say it again. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Then we get that little tiny scene of the peaceable after the boys get kicked out. Running around with trying to get cinema verite footage of, mm -hmm. and au natural footage of the various customers of Frank's restaurants. Well, he is annoyed at them for doing so. Uh, the girls come in and fight, even though Frank's desperately trying to show them, look, I'm in a good mood. Look, I made this pizza. Oh, I love that. Poor yes. Frank. Poor Frank. His good mood ruined forever. Yep. And so, I love uh, that and it gives him permission to just throw the pizza into the vestibule of the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Just being so dumb. So dumb. The whole situation. Yep. yep. 
I mean, that's, I mean, it's a very predictable setup, which is that the timing is yeah. wrong. The intent is fine. The timing is wrong. It's, it's one of those, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. which is, which is unfortunate, <laughs> but it, ha- but you know, it happens. It happens yeah. in real life too. It's almost like, you yeah. know, I mean, we, we sort yeah. of understand that the universe has, has it out for us in that fashion that as soon yeah, as yeah, we yeah. decide to say, Hey universe, I want to do this thing. The universe is like, well, yeah, <laughs> what about if we do this to you? You know? And then and stuff. Happens. You want a plague? I'll give you a plague. It's gonna be an awesome plague. Oh God! Oh man! Oh, by the time this episode Everybody goes up, hopefully you're, we're, hopefully people out there are list are not having to deal with it quite so much. Knocking <sighs> wood. We have a vaccine by the time this episode rolls out. Good lord. God, I hope so. Either that, or the I whole love... planet's been nuked from orbit because it's the only way to be sure. God. God. Yeah. Save me, Ellen Ripley. You're my only hope. Mm. Uh, I love the line I'll have you know cream puffs don't have bellies <laughs> that is a lot that was perfect that was cute that during this scene excellent there's a perfect button on their arguments mm-hmm Oh, um, uh, quick note that I also mentioned because I, I need to mention because it's it's in here uh, Terry Buttafuoco gets two references in this episode doesn't she yes yes she does yeah, but anyway, yeah, no, it's 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 overall it's it's cute. It has it it has um it's cute, it's inspiring, it's fun, um it's well it's well done, and we get to see Laverne and Shirley, we get to see Laverne and Shirley in uniforms at the end, which is yes, the crossing guard bit. It's fantastic, the muggers, the thugs, the jaywalkers. Yes, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> <laughs> I like the montage. Uh, I like the montage actually in Bowling for Raspberries better, but I, this montage is fun. It's fine. It's well directed, very well directed. And I was going to add the girls sing I Hope. Laverne sings High Hopes to Shirley. Mm hmm. That is such a positive rarity in this show, and it's really sweet. Mm-hmm. And it's just what she needs to hear at that time. I love those moments, both of them. Perfect. Absolutely. Perfect. Yeah, she also, and on that note, Laverne also is the one that has to give the slap this time too. Yeah. Because because usually yep, you exactly. see it as Shirley starting to do the slap and Laverne responding to it, and here Laverne takes the, has to take the initiative based on the circumstances, which was interesting. So now, so when you pointed out that that came to mind, that note I had earlier as well. The the fact that she is mom, she's basically the mom. Mm-hmm. She is mom figure here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's a switch. It's a switch because Laverne's usually the one who's always a little wild. So it's a good switch. It's a good, it's a fun switch. Yeah, and especially because I mean, it's a, it's a reminder that mothers aren't just for when a child needs to be kind of reeled in for their wildness, but sometimes they need the push to get out of the nest and to succeed, and to help get the mugger, and to show up chiefy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Screw the chief. Screw him. Yeah. Screw him. Yeah, it's take take a just take a take a take a screwdriver and just and just put him into that wall and just pin him to the wall and <laughs> Oh, we went way too gory. <laughs> I mean I I didn't say that it had to be through flesh. I didn't say it had to be through flesh. It could be through his clothes. You pin him through his clothes. Get that eventually. <laughs> okay, I was totally thinking about it in a fleshy sort of way. <laughs> Vibe that with your laugh. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. All right. It is time for us to slap a grade on this baby. I would give this a solid seven. It's it's there's yes. a lot of good quality stuff here. The directing was definitely you know it feels more directed. Uh, timing's really good. Writing's really consistent throughout. Um, Norman's completely on point. This is where Norman doesn't feel like an aside, which in season three, he's kind of, when he's shown up, it's kind of felt like, oh, and here's Norman, by the way. And and here he yeah. actually gets to feel like a real rounded character. Uh, the Shirley stuff is really good development. It's it, it definitely, it makes her a bit cheesy and corny for the sake of comedy, but it's it, it's a sympathetic and um, an empowering, you know, arc that, you know, like any good Kung Fu movie, she has to go beat the bad guy at the end. In this case, it's an obstacle course is the bad guy. That's why I referenced 36 Chamber of Shaolin, by the way. So if anyone's not seen that, it's a good movie to see because it's about it's about somebody being discovering obstacles and having to overcome them. 
And so, yeah, it's, it's, it was good. I liked it a lot. Yeah. This is a solid eight for me. Hey, nice. Uh, good dialogue, really good direction. I love the Norman Vern stuff. I love Shirley's arc here, which is really fun and really powerful and really good. Frank is perfect seasoning on top with Edna. Uh, the boys' subplot about the movie making is hilarious. It just needs a button. That's why this is in rank tire. Mm -hmm. It feels like loose ended and unnecessary in a lot of ways. That like, doesn't have an ending. Give me an ending, Joe. <laughs> Complete your arcs, Joe. I know you can do it. But that is the only reason that stays at around an eight for me. That it's still a worthwhile episode. Close to a must-see episode, uh, empowering and strong and beautifully done. Even though you know it's about cops, and, well, yeah, for some folks that ain't gonna be a fun subject, but otherwise, it's wonderful, beautiful episode. Mm -hmm. Cool, yeah. nice, yay. yay! All right. Well, I guess if that's everything, um, I guess next to say is thank you so much for joining us, everybody, for Night After Night. If you would like to know more or if you would like to join us on social media, you can find us at Night After Night Pod on Facebook, Tumblr, WordPress, as well as YouTube. Or find us at Night F Night PC on Twitter. If you want to get a little more direct, check out some of our mega threads that we do discussing the show and... Um, joining us for any other other social activities we might be doing there uh we also have a patreon if you would like to throw us some shekels to see if we can uh you know do some extra projects you know it's it's we will we kind of need a little bit of tactical support for some of the things we want to do for you know after after all this is all all done and some extra stuff for the show and it'd be a good day a little boost there but anyways i'm just starting to ramble i think i'm just going to uh I think we're gonna just, you know, I'm gonna go take my leave here. I'm gonna go get all dressed up. And uh, Lisa, where are we, where are we going next? You told me to dress up all nice and fancy. Fancy is gonna be the modus, uh, the most operandi of the next episode. Lenny takes Laverne out to a debutante ball, which happens to be the title of this episode. Next week. Ah, the debutantes. Okay, sounds good. Well, thanks everybody, and hope we'll see you then. Bye now. Mm -hmm.